All right. I'll scoot that out of the way. <laughs> Good morning, Alyssa. Welcome. Thanks for coming down to the digital experience of Curiosity Corner Live. We'll give people a little, little bit of time, just a few more moments. Move my banner. Here we go. All right. So, before we get started, um, this weekend was a little scary, so just wanted to take a few moments to mention um, events in Cleveland and around the country remind us that we all need to be present in our community. Um, and as a STEM-based education leader in Northeast Ohio, we want to make sure that the Science Center stays true to our vision for a community that uses STEM to inform decision-making and enrich lives. Uh, our Curiosity Corner Live programming this week is shifting to reflect a more inclusive look at some STEM innovators, both from Northeast Ohio and beyond, who personify the tenacious spirit and drive for understanding that science can inspire in anyone regardless of gender, ethnicity, or religious background. So today we're gonna talk about Garrett Morgan and traffic lights, and we're going to chat while I build a homemade traffic light. So first things first, who was Garrett Morgan? Well, here's Garrett Morgan. He lived in the early 20th century, so um, 1910s through 19, I believe he passed away in 1963. So he, he lived in the late 19th century, early 20th century, and he was an inventor. And he invented a kind of traffic light it was a traffic signal. He got the patent in 1923. So here's a picture of his traffic signal. His traffic signal, whoop, I just minimized that, bring that back. His traffic signal um, had three um, warnings on it. So nowadays we see traffic lights, they have three lights. He was one of the first people to suggest this idea of a, a three signal traffic light. It used to be just stop and go. Um, but Garrett Morgan, he was driving one day and witnessed a really bad car accident at a problematic intersection. And so he was inspired to um, build a new kind of traffic light and he got it patented. And nowadays, oh, there's the other one. <laughs> nowadays we have traffic lights that have three lights so that there's stop, there's go, and then right in the middle is yellow, which is proceed with caution. It's a transition between the two traffic signals. So we're gonna make our own traffic light. I have a box here, it's just a special K box. And traffic lights don't look like special K boxes. They're yellow or black or something like that. So I'm going to cover this up with some construction paper. And, oh, hello, Isaac. Hello, REJ. I'm doing pretty good. Thanks for asking. 
So I have construction paper and tape, and I'm going to tape some construction paper to one side of this. If I can get the end off of this. There we go. I'm going to tape some construction paper to my box to be my traffic light. And it's actually kind of interesting to think about the history of traffic lights and traffic signals because for a long time we didn't need traffic lights. We had um, horses and just walked places or we had carriages and for a long time there were no cars and so it wasn't that dangerous on the road. Sure, things could happen. Horses could get spooked and carriages could get spooked. <laughs> um, but usually you didn't need to worry about a five-ton hunk of metal barreling down the road at 20, 30, 40, or more miles an hour. So once cars came along, then they needed to make sure that traffic was safe. And usually it was somebody standing there directing traffic, but that's not safe for the person directing traffic. Um, so they built things like booths for the person to stand in and direct traffic. Um, but the more cars there were, the, the more people they needed for those intersections and the more intersections needed those people. And, oh, Vera, hello, Vera, hello, Nathan. Um, we're talking about the history of traffic lights. <laughs> um, so the more people they needed for those intersections, so they couldn't pay everybody to stand at an intersection and direct traffic. They needed automatic little, automatic lights or automatic signals or something. So they started developing those, but they only had stop and go. And the problem is if someone's going along and suddenly it changes from go to stop, then there has to be a little buffer. There has to be a, a, a transition. So Garrett Morgan, who lived in Cleveland, he realized that you needed you needed that transition. So he developed a traffic light with that transition. And eventually that became the yellow light. So I just finished wrapping my box with yellow paper. I'm going to tape it. It's not perfect, but it will do the job. There we go. Ooh. And yeah, there's um Garrett Morgan was a a prominent inventor here in Cleveland. He uh, there's actually a high school named after him, Garrett Morgan High School. And I'll tape this side. Well, I'll worry about that side later. So there's part of my traffic light. Now we need a uh, actual lights. So what I have here are a few different laundry detergent caps. So I'm going to put those on here and those will be my lights. Uh, but I should probably cut a hole in there so that the light can sit in there and so that we can actually shine a light um, through. So this is where the scissors come out and this is where you'll you might need a grown-ups help. So let's see if I can Oop, that was a <laughs> ooh now comes the challenge of cutting the box. Let's see here. There we go. I got 
Oh, there we go. Okay. <laughs> Using scissors in ways they were not intended for. <laughs> so I'm going to cut. I'll try to cut a circle here. No guarantees. Maybe I'll make it a square. As long as that light can fit in there. In hindsight, I should have cut the circle before I put the paper on. But I didn't make a mistake. I found a way that didn't work. And that's all part of inventing. So when you're at home designing your own traffic light, you can think about what your traffic light is designed to do. Um, is it a normal traffic light? Is it a traffic light that can be seen even if there's bright light shining at it, like the sun? A lot of car accidents happen at dusk and dawn because the sun is hanging in the sky and it gets in people's eyes. Um, so maybe it's a traffic light that could do that. Or maybe it's a traffic light that doesn't use colors at all. Maybe it's a traffic light that, use, that uses patterns. Because um, red-green color blindness is really common. So people who have red-green col color blindness, they have to make sure that they know... Um, they look at where the light is. They can't see the color of it. Um, so they have to see where the light is. And here's a interesting, a fun little factoid. Um, there's a intersection in New York City where the, the bottom light is red and the top light is green. Um, so, people with color blindness have a little bit of trouble with that intersection because it, the traffic light's upside down. But red still means stop and green still means go. Yeah. Garrett Morgan invented other things, um, but he's... Very well known for inventing the three signal traffic light. Well, it doesn't look like I have a lot of room on this box for <laughs> three lights, but I'm going to make it work. Whoops. Oh, that actually makes it a little easier. And of course, if you don't have these at home, I just happen to have these, um, you can use uh, saran wrap, plastic wrap. You could color it in with markers and tape that over the holes of your traffic light. This one will be kind of similar to classic traffic lights that use bulbs. Um, just big incandescent light bulbs. <laughs> hey, there we go. That looks pretty good. There are modern traffic lights that use LEDs. Um, and one interesting side effect of that is with an LED traffic light, it doesn't melt any snow that gets stuck to it because an incandescent bulb is so hot it'll melt the snow. Um, so there's some LED traffic lights that have heating coils inside so that they uh, can um, melt the snow. Um, traffic light's almost done. I think it's almost done, but there's one problem. The back is opaque, which means that you can't see through it. So I'm actually gonna open up a slot in the back and here we go. Yeah. Oh, thank you, Momgeneering the Future. I'm glad that 
it looks good so far. So I'm opening up a big slot in the back. And the reason I'm doing this, instead of opening up um, little holes behind each, each uh, bulb, is this way I can use one light for all three bulbs. Oops, not just flat here. There we go. Ugh. Let's get a little farther down. Got to get that green light. Oh, got to retape that because I cut the tape off. There we go. There's homemade traffic light there. So I have a light here. It's a bright LED flashlight. I have to be careful. Okay. There we go. You can see how bright that is. And if I shine it right there, there's a stop, stop light. And then go straight to go. And then it goes from go to slow down. And then it stopped. So there's my traffic light. And of course, I could, I have some yellow markers here. So I'm going to make that yellow light so that people know that they need to slow down. There we go. Let's see if that gives us a nice yellow. So stop. Oh no, it's go. Oh, it's backwards. There we go. Go. And then stop. Slow down. And then stop. <laughs> yeah. I might need like paint or something to get this to be really yellow. All right. So that's all I have. There's my homemade traffic light. And you can make your own at home, and you can share those results on social media with the hashtag StayCuriousCLE. Um, I want to see what you make. Um, it's going to be awesome to see what you make. Be sure you share those results. Um, and if you come up with a new kind of traffic light, I'd definitely be interested in seeing that. Um, there won't be a follow-up video today. Uh, starting in June, we're going to move away from follow-up videos. Um, so this will be the last time you see me today. But definitely come back tomorrow. We're going to talk about rockets, and we're going to talk about astronaut Guy Bluford. So I'll give you your shout-outs for your awesome traffic lights tomorrow morning, and we'll see you then. So thank you very much for stopping by. Stay safe and stay curious.